Jasmine Nail, and you are watching That Gun Corner. You're watching That Gym Corner with Miss Trey That Gym. The good, the bad, the greedy, baby. You're watching That Gym Corner with Miss Trey That Gym. Tune in. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am your guest host, Coco Janelle, for this episode of That Gym Corner, and I will be coming to you, talking to you about my journey as an entrepreneur. Now, we just gonna hop right into that thing, y'all. So, we gonna start with where I began. I really didn't know um, about what I wanted to do in life. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew that corporate America was not my jizz, like seriously, not my jizz. So, but I didn't know what my talent was. I didn't know what my gift to the world would be. I didn't know any of that business. So, God puts people in your path and they kind of help guide you to your destiny. So I was approached with the uh, with the situation um, to help a friend publish a book. And I was like, okay, well, I can do that. But I mean, I did doubt myself. I'm not even going to lie. I, even though I love books, books is my life. English was my major. I love the written word. Like, it's, I'm all about that. However, again, still was not, I'm going to say, not confident, but I wasn't, well, I guess you can say I wasn't confident in myself. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't know what... Um, if I would be any good at what I loved. So I still dove head first into the business and let me tell y'all, it was not anything uh, what I thought. I had to literally go back to school on myself. I had to, and not so much as far as the words that were being wrote down on a piece of paper, but the business aspect of it. There are so many moving parts when you're an entrepreneur and seeing as though most of the time you either do it alone or with a very small team, you're wearing 15, 20 million different hats. And sometimes you just don't play and don't know what the heck you're doing. And it's okay to say that, but I, I still roll with the punches. But needless to say, I got into it and um, I started learning about who I was about myself personally not myself as a business person but me coco who she was and it was questioning and caused me to question a lot about who i was and what it is that i wanted in life um so uh when i got into it like i said i went full force head down the rabbit hole i went all the way in but then there were certain situations that i got placed in that i found myself uh either procrastinating um or doing a lot of things that you shouldn't do as an entrepreneur, even as a person. So that leads led me to my next situation, which was accountability. Holding myself accountable for the things that I was doing in life. Holding myself accountable for communicating with the people that I was working with, uh, doing the projects that I said I was gonna do, and uh, finding time to be a daughter, a girlfriend, a friend, and to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. I had to be accountable to all of those things and still working on the corporate hamster wheel. So when I was faced with accountability, it has been probably the most hardest thing I've ever done because with accountability has to come change. You can't really just be like, oh yeah, I know that about myself, but that's just me. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. I hear people all the time saying this, that, oh, I that's just who I am, that's just who I was, that's just how I was raised. That don't mean that it's right. That don't mean that you don't need to change. That don't mean you don't need to take stock in who you are and what you're doing and make the conscious effort to be a better person, to be better at what you're doing. Oh, you can be the best at what you're doing currently, but that don't mean you can't get better. But you still continuously have to hold yourself accountable. You have to stop, drop, shut them down, open up, shut. No, you have to stop and really think about what it is that you're doing. Why are you doing what you're doing? And if you're doing, if the why is like, okay, I'm doing this because I want financial freedom or I want to secure a future for my children and my family, I want to be the one that makes it out the hood, then there's going to be some changes, little boy or little girl. And I'm just saying, it's going to be some changes. It's going to be some hard hitting facts. Um, and I'm trying to sit here and think about one thing that's really been difficult for me um, to change. And that's probably my procrastination. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. 
if if I'm not given a deadline, I ain't gonna do it probably. I'm probably and even if I am given a deadline, I'm probably gonna wait till the night before and then do it. But again, that does not work. That uh, it works sometimes when when I'm writing, it works because you know I work well under pressure. But everything else, it does not work. In any other aspect of my life, procrastination is like the death of the business. Like it is not something that you should be proud of. I'm gonna say that. Cause it's really, it doesn't help anybody. You end up forgetting stuff, you're missing something here, or you just flat out just don't do it. And then now you're here looking at these other people that's holding you accountable or that depend on you to do your part and you haven't done it. Get your life together. I'm just saying this to myself cause I can see myself. So get your life together, like get your life together. So I'm gonna say that yeah, accountability is has to be the number one thing that being an entrepreneur embarking on this journey has really brought to the forefront of my mind. I consistently take stock in what am, what am I doing, like, uh, and being held accountable for the things that I don't do, that I say I'm gonna do. I think I learned, aside from procrastination, is how to manage myself. So there was, we did a very amazing event called the Authors Wind Down, and it will be back, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and it featured a bunch of, or a couple of African American women, and they were talking about like time management, they were talking about credit, and how all of those things was important. We also had a young lady there that spoke about her experience as an indie author. I'm telling y'all, it was a great time, it really was. And even though I uh, helped put the event together, I still sat down with a pad and a piece of paper, especially during the time management part because I always wanted to know how people um, with very little time did so much. And it was the most profound thing I have ever heard. She said that she didn't manage time because we can't manage time. We can't control it. We can't stop it, slow it down, rewind it. We can't do any of that. The only thing we can do is manage ourselves. And I was like, ah, what a nugget. What a nugget. It was so profound that I've been thinking about it ever since, about how to manage myself. I know we have 24 hours in a day. I know most of the time, because I like to sleep, honey. I don't know about y'all. I need my beauty rest. So I need at least eight to nine hours to be productive. Five to six if I'm, you know, if I'm out partying all night or something like that. But typically eight to nine hours gets me good and rested and I'm ready to go. I'm not grouchy in the morning and I'm, I'm here and I'm focused and my mind's all in the right place. So we'll take those eight to nine hours out. And now I'm working with about 10 to 11 hours no, that, I can't count. 13, 14 to 15 hours of waking time. 14 to 15 hours. And depending on the day, nine of those hours I spent on the corporate hamster wheel. So that's 18 hours of my weekday that is gone. Um, and so now I'm sitting here with six hours of time. What the heck do I do with those six hours of time? Now, I told y'all before that I'm a big old procrastinator. And that does not change. In every part of my life, I am a procrastinator. And I'm working. But I had six hours of, of working time or of time that I could sit down and work on my business, work on whatever it is that I needed to work on. So managing myself has been the second most difficult situation that I've found myself in. Those six hours are very precious. But one thing, and I, I think my mama didn't get me tested as a child. I might have had ADHD. I don't know. But my brain be all over the place, y'all. I can't sit down. I can't focus sometimes. I'm like, ooh, butterflies. And then I'm gone. My brain's done. I am a wrap and it's going to take me at least an hour to get back to what I'm doing. Um, and then, like I said, I had other responsibilities as a daughter, as, as a girlfriend. I, I was with my boyfriend at the time and I had things I had to do. So it was six hours that I had and I kept focusing on those six hours that I had. So then it was like, well, what am I actually doing at work? <laughs> what am I actually doing? Like, do I need that much sleep? Like, okay, sleep, yes, I need that much sleep. But um, as far as when I was working on a corporate hamster wheel, like when I'm at work, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do. So I started writing things down. Um, I am a, a brick and mortar or a hard copy type of person. I need 
pay pen pen to paper i need it down i mean it's cool to type on a computer but the computer I, i'm on a computer all the time it really gets mundane and it gets overwhelming back be hurting neck eyes from the blue screen it's just a mess so i like to to, to have pen to paper <clears throat> and so i started writing things down such as you know all of the tasks that i had they were sometimes daunting so to put them in order of importance and how much time it would take to do those. Um, I do a lot of the digital things for that gym enterprises and digital things or my, the flyers usually take a long time uh, because I'm a perfectionist that way. And it's never really just done for me. Like I'm always going back and looking at it like, oh, I should have did that. Like, oh, I should have done this. Like I just want that five second fact. So I had to get out of that. I had to get out of wanting it to be perfect. I want it to be done. Being perfect has caused procrastination and time management to be a huge problem for me um, because I want to be perfect, because perfection is always at the forefront of my mind. I don't know why that is. I'm trying to figure out where the heck that even came from because I already know life isn't perfect. So once I got, once I get into the whole uh, digital thing, I give the flyer two to three hours of my time. That's it. Whatever I come up with in that two to three hours, that's the flyer. I'm done with it. I'm sending it on for approval and I'm not going to look back. If there's something like, you know, a date that needs to be changed or some small little tweaks is fine um, that's coming from, uh, the feedback from my team, but as far as any of the core work, any of the actual putting it together, that is done within that two to three hours. So, so now I have three hours if I'm doing the flyer. Now I have three hours of time left. What do I do? We have so many productions going on. Like I'm pretty sure there's something I got to write. I'm pretty sure there's something that I need to be typing up or what have you. So uh, when I come back, well, while I'm at work, after I'm putting the pen to the paper, um, sometimes I sit there and write an outline. Don't judge me. You don't know where I work, man, to business. Um, so I put that, I put it, I type it up, I do whatever. And sometimes you never know when inspiration going to strike you. You never know when it's going to be, um, oh, I got this great idea. And if any of you are creatives, you understand that getting it down, getting it out onto paper makes it real. So now you're starting to think about it. Because if you don't get it out, you will forget that great idea that you had. And so you want to kind of just see, but even if it's just scribbling on a piece of paper, a napkin, um, putting it in your phone. I've been doing that a lot in pages. Putting it in your phone, putting a reminder to yourself to come back and really work that out. But like I said, corporate America is not the, in my end game. So while I appreciate and am very grateful for my, my job at this point, it is not the end for me. That is not my end game. So I can't give all of my time to a corporation that I am not going to spend that much time in. I refuse to give my last bit of anything to a place that I'm not going to be there, that is not going to be serving me within the next, hopefully, 24 months. Like, I'm just not going to do it. I am going to give them as much as me as I, I can, um, give them what they want, which is, you know, their, what do we have, like, goals and metrics to reach. I'll reach that metric. But once that metric is done, ma'am, I am no longer on your time. I am on my time. And my time is very valuable because I, we all know I only got six hours after I'm done here. So my time is very valuable. So whatever I can fit in while I'm at work, I fit it in, honey. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to fit that in, honey. So I wrote whole episodes at my job for our upcoming production. And I've wrote out timelines. I've even done flyers while I'm at work. It is what it is, honey, because I have, I believe that I will not be on this, working in this corporate field for the, about two years. I'm going to give myself two years. That's it. I'm closing my back door. And we're going to talk about closing your back doors at another time, y'all, because that just sounded like a little kinky. But closing your back door is important. So I closed that back door. I know what it is, where I'm going, and it ain't there. It ain't there. So again, back to my six hours. 
I've not already spent three hours on the flyer at home. Now I got three hours left. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit down at my computer and I'm going to write out whatever it is that I need to write out. Most of the time it's working on a production because that is when I get to have an escape. When, when I'm writing, I get to do, I get to delve into my characters. I get to become my characters. I get to escape all of the harsh realities that I'm dealing with, all of the hats that I get to wear, and I simply just get to be a writer because that's at the core of who I am. That is what I want to do. That is my passion in life, and that's what I love. It puts me in such a calm place. It puts me in such a position of power that I can't get out of it. Sometimes I don't want to leave the writing world because it gives me such a, a, a natural high. And I'm just like, yes, this is everything. So by the time I'm done writing that, and most of the time I ain't even going to lie, I be going over. So <laughs> those three hours that I had previously, it'll be 11, 12 o'clock before I crawl on in the bed. Now imagine, I got, I got to be up at five, y'all. And it's hard for a girl like me to get up at five, honey. I got to talk to myself at five o'clock in the morning. Like, you can do this. My own little chili. I be in that bed like, Jesus, just one more minute. My body be like, no, get up. Get up, because one more minute going to turn into 20 more minutes, and 20 more minutes, I'm going to be late. And then if I'm late, then here we go with them asking me why I'm late. Now I got to deal with this problem. I might lose my job. If I lose my job, I can't afford the things that it's going to take for me to be an entrepreneur. So that is not an option either. So managing time has been the most greatest gift and biggest hurdle next to procrastination that I have um, encountered. But I can tell you right now, as far as time management or managing myself, I have been mastering that. I have been, um, like I said, writing down those lists, um, holding myself accountable to those lists, to that timeline, to those two to three hours of work, to those six hours of work, whatever. Holding myself to that has been the most um, rewarding thing when it comes to managing my time. Let me warn you, when you start praying, I'm going in, so don't lose focus. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm back, you go all the way. Come on now, Drew. All I'm the way. I'm going to need some lotion for these ashy knuckles, Lord. Hey, we don't care about what the ash knuckles. Well, you last seen, so we got to let them get to this first. You know what? Yeah, we got a little time. We got time. You know what thing ain't until... What? Hello. I am Pastor Russ. And I am here to save y'all souls. Hey, babies. How y'all doing? My name is Coco. What's your name, baby? Can I shake your hand, Jay? I don't know. It's the Coco. You can't touch me. Jayvon, what's your name, baby? Hey, Darius. What's your name? Tavion. Tavion. You fancy, Tavion. Darius, Tavion, is Tavion. I'm going to get that right. I'm going to get that right. All right, let me go on down here to these stairs. I met my little babies. My little babies, little Javon, Tavion, and Darius. I just saw a little kitty kitty. Uh-huh. What's your care about that clothes? Some diamonds on the rough. And I missed it. Oh, are we? Hey. Look at, look at brother Odell over here. Detective. Sexy detective. Old Mother Steel. Old Tacky Deacon Evans. Hey, Deacon. Deacon. Pastors in the building. Why does Lash won't let me be great? I'm gonna be busting there like Chantram. He like the real police. He burst in that. Is past the boobies out too much? Wait, is the first thing with the Jasmine and yeah, you coming from this way? I'm about to move this stuff. No, no, she didn't. No, no. Who gonna do the no? Well, you're actually going to have to go outside. Um, you're going to be coming down the stairs. We're going to catch you like, you know, one of your, somebody going to open the clothes to go. Okay. Oh. This is a uh, niggerish. 
A little niggerish. Just a little bit. Say you want is easy. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of that gym corner where you got a sneak peek into the producer's life or where I've, I've been and where I've come from and all of that good jazz and business and I did mention something earlier about the back door and I'm going to tell you this um I learned something along my path of all of these all of the jobs I used to job hop a lot y'all um but there was one job that said that you can't focus on what you're doing now because you haven't closed your back door you haven't shut that door and said that this is it. This is what I'm doing. You got to make that decision now. Once you make the decision to do something, close the back door. There are no other options. There is no other way. There are no other roads. That is it. In the future, if you decide that this is no longer your path, you're going to open your front door and move forward. You're not going to keep looking back because that back door is closed. You closed that long time ago. So, Close your back door. Stop leaving that open for other things. No, because it's going to cloud your brain. It's going to cloud your brain. Focus on your purpose. Focus on what it is you're doing and close that door. Once you close it, I promise you, the front doors will open. Okay? All right. Well, it's been a blessing sitting here talking to you guys. I hope that you watch, listen, share, click, like. We have a lot of great things coming up for y'all, so I hope you pay attention. All right, and I hope y'all tune in on Christmas Eve for a Diamond in the Rough Christmas special because your girl will be making her acting debut, honey. So y'all need to go ahead and tune in. Um, also, go check out our Facebook page at That Gym Enterprises. So we are on Instagram. I think it's uh, That Gym ENT. So you can go check that out. We'll be having updates about our productions and anything that we got going on. And because we want to stay in contact with y'all, don't be afraid to hit us up. We just like to talk because that's what we do. And y'all have a great evening or morning, lunch. Thank you for watching That Gym Corner. Tune in to the next episode every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Looking forward to seeing you watch That Gym Corner.